Okay, so they played a Petrov again. again, and Magnus played here in the f game that they played the Petrov last time, and this time he played d4. And Magnus played an innocuous line. In this position, he played knight d2, not very common. Common moves are knight c3 and castles. And according to the engines, and there must be secret illegal preparation I don't know of, this move is just dead equal. So obviously, Magnus had something prepared that we don't know. The reason it's equal is this is obviously ridiculously drawn. And if bishop e3, queen b4 check, the only way to not have a ridiculous draw with king here is to sack a pawn, which the engine says is okay. So I'm assuming... Magnus was armed to the teeth here, but most of the lines are white playing bishop d2 and then perpetuating the queen. So I, I really don't know what Magnus had in mind if queen e7 was played. Um, and the engine doesn't either. The engine's like, queen e7, what's the problem? But he played bishop d6. And now black has a lot of problems. Rook one check's annoying and queen h5 is annoying. So Jan thought forever and played a move I would never consider unless I was playing bullet then I would play it anyway, even without considering it. He put it in H. Now, if we play a normal move, castles, and the position is completely symmetrical, then queen h5 causes a lot of issues. And queen h4 isn't a good defense to that. Copycat chess. So we're threatening mate, we're threatening mate in several, and we're threatening a pawn. <clears throat> if you don't want to lose material, you have to play f5. And you're really weakening, you know, bishop is terrible, weakening e5. And the engine likes white quite a bit. So he didn't want to do that. And he could also play bishop e6, move his queen to either d7 or f6, and then castle the queen side. But he decided to play h5, and now Magnus thought for 37 hours. And he actually thought for 41 minutes. Mm -hmm. And that's longer than you guys, like, play a chess game. Yeah. Especially blitz. <clears throat> and the engine was thinking either queen f3 or c4, and he played queen e1 check, which nobody was discussing ever. And the idea was white wants to trade the dark squared bishops, because when the white squared bishops are on the board, as you will see, white's better. And if black wants to attack with queen h4 and h4 and so forth, that's, that's the bishop he's attacking with. So the reason he played queen e1 check is he wants to play bishop b4 and trade bishops. Now, we don't understand, and the engine doesn't understand, why this isn't just equal. And I know I don't understand. And I analyzed this, and it looked like it was equal. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. This is definitely better than what he did. So twice, Jan could have played queen e7 this game and probably been equal or about equal, mm -hmm. and he, he decided not to. So he played king f8. So Magnus got everything he wanted. He played bishop b4. He wants to trade these bishops. Black has no attack ever, and white just has a more pleasant endgame. And now Jan played queen e7. Now you tell me. Now you could argue, and Jan probably will, I wanted to play queen e7, but I preferred my king on f8 so I can play rook e8 quicker. All right. But, but okay, trading, trading the bishops and leaving the queens on is good for white. Trading the bishops and the queens, that's getting closer to a draw. So I don't like I don't like King F8. Okay. And then here White's just better. Better bishop, safer king. H5 may or may not be good, unclear. And probably if black plays perfectly in like a computer game, it would be a draw, but every grandmaster wants white here. Now here he played rook e8, which obviously is why he played king f8. And in this position, he played a move the engines didn't like. Um, the way the engines want to play is not a way a human would want to play. The engine just wants to trade rooks, play g6, king g7, and trade more rooks. And we do want to trade all the rooks because then it looks like pretty drawn. But we don't want to play g6 if we don't have to because we don't want to put all of our pawns on the white squares with the white squared bishop here and weakening all the dark squares for our queen to infiltrate. However... Jan proved me wrong later when he put more pawns on white squares, which also wasn't good. So these imperceptible mistakes that Jan was making now went from equal to slightly worse to much worse to losing. 
That's just Magnus's game. That's exactly what Magnus wants. Conversely, <clears throat> Jan wants to mix it up and play crazy, which is why he played h5, king, f8. But the result of that was really boring, slightly worse, which Jan doesn't like that. That's like Geary likes that. <clears throat> Leiko liked that. And that's it. Is there more? Who likes to be slightly worse than draw anyway? Just Geary and Leiko, I think. Okay. <clears throat> So he played rook h6. Engine does not approve. It's a rook lift, which I sort of like, but okay. He played queen g5. Excellent. Punishing, you know, black for having this weird position with the pawn on h5 and the king on f8. The queen is pressuring everything here. So if the rook ever goes here, this pawn is hanging. We can't play g6 and defend our pawn because this is hanging. He can't play queen g6 or rook g6 because there's a bishop here. You can't play queen f6 because the d-pawn is hanging. So basically this, this queen is all up in black's grill. The only way to effectively get rid of it is to play the insanely weakening f6. And with my shirt on, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Right. And mm -hmm. the engine says that's terrible. Frankly. Because we're making this bishop better. We're trapping our rook. And my shirt says not to do it. That's the main reason. Okay. So he played c6, which I don't like. I was complaining about it a lot. And Karen and I had a good talk about it, why I didn't like it. Um, it blocks the That's bishop. True. It puts another pawn on the white squares. And it doesn't help black mm, evacuate this bad position by trading everything. It's just random legal move. Now, the reason Jan played it is his queen was tied down to his pawn. So he wants to play queen f6 and kick the queen out. Okay, I want a trillion dollars, but I wouldn't play c6. So maybe. Another way for black to play to make it crazy is queen b4. Okay, giving away this pawn and then this pawn and so forth. And, you know, the engine doesn't really like anything black does, but I really don't like this move. I think it makes his position worse. I think he should play c7. Now, there's a funny variation which didn't happen that I was showing. In this position, um, did I make up the variation? Probably. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Yeah, that's right. In this position, if Jan plays rook e6, which he didn't do, then I take, take here, check, always play bishop f1. Now, if Jan had his pawn on c7 and didn't play c6, now he could play bishop b5. That would be reasonable. Okay, but the pawn on c6, he can't play bishop b5. So white's just up a pawn here. And, you know, white's probably winning. Probably. Okay, so if you can't play rook e6, that's another advantage white has. White has the e-file. And the reason he took with the bishop instead of the king, because the bishop's better here, is you hang your g-pawn. You can't take with the king. Okay, so he played queen f6. Now, in this position... Magnus didn't play the most forceful way. He played the most solid way, and he hoped that Jan would fall on his sword, which he did. So Magnus was right as usual. The most accurate move is this. You can't play queen takes d4 for a funny reason. And my guess, and I'm serious, I think the reason he didn't play queen g3 is he analyzed this, rook e6, and he decided not to do it. Okay, which is correct. He shouldn't do this. And I think Magnus just missed bishop f5, which is easy to miss. The point of bishop f5 is to stop rook e6. But now if it's white's move, after this you resign. Since black has a free move here, he probably didn't look at bishop f5. He sacked a pawn. He can't play queen b yeah. and win, so he just stopped looking. That's my guess. Now, the other way to play is to play h4, putting in an h. And after we trade rook d6, I don't think white's winning here. White's just better. Yeah. If the rook had to go to h8, then okay, maybe. Okay, so, so Magnus defended his pawn. He played queen e3. Not only defending his pawn, but threatening mate with advantage. So bishop d7 is forced. And this is another move I didn't like. I was hoping he could get an h4 later, but he already can't. Now, from... Magnus's point of view, he can now play queen g3 as opposed to when the bishop was on e8 because now queen takes loses immediately to this. It's check. 
If this was here, Black would play rook e6, but it's checked, so he resigns. And after this, queen d6 is forced. And maybe, I think Magnus underestimated this for white. I think this is good for white, although now the engine's saying h4, h3 is okay. And the idea is to never play f6. Any variation where f6 is a bad move, I'm going to analyze it because of my shirt. After f6, rook e8 check, you will know his name is the Lord when he takes your queen next move. And the reason it doesn't work right away is because the rook on h6 is defending the queen. f6 cuts off the communication. So here white's better, but actually with the bishop on e8, it says white was better. Here it doesn't because I can push this pawn up. See, the difference is with, with the bishop on e8, if I play here and you start pushing your pawn, now I'm threatening mate in one. And with the bishop on d7, I'm not. That's why queen e3 is inaccurate. So now if I play queen g3, queen d6, rook e5, I can start pushing this pawn, and you, you can't make a threat because the bishop is defending e8. So, so instead of bishop f1, the engine move, threatening queen a3 check, he played h3, which I didn't like, but now I think it's okay. And now the game is more likely to be a draw than a win, uh, except for one thing. So he played h4, which I love, fixing the white pawns on the white squares, getting some more space, perpetual checks everywhere, which you'll see later. c4, I like that, because it's c4, it's one of my rules. And in this position, Jan made the worst move in the history of chess. And as we're watch, doing the recap right now, live, Jan's choking on his rage at the press conference. Yeah. Jan's like, bah, you know, what's wrong with me? Okay. And, and Magnus is like, plus two, what else? Yeah, two wins. Yeah. Okay, so in this position, it's very obvious to a 2800 player that queen a, queen a3 check is winning. And so black should play king g8, then queen a3 is in check. Queen d6 is also okay. A6 is okay. I think queen d8 might be okay. And, no, queen d8 is not okay because I go here. And the engine thinks after king g8, this should be a draw with correct play. And instead, Jan just made a terrible, terrible, terrible blunder. I don't know why. I have two reasons why, but neither one makes sense. So we're, we're never going to know why. But never they're, they're saying yet. Jan said that uh, he didn't see his bishop was hanging at the end. So. After king g8. Right, after king g8. Okay. That's... That was the one that he thought so, he didn't see. So this is a blunder and loses the game, b5. Right. Now, if white doesn't have this forced win, then b5 is great. Mm -hmm. the, the b5 is the best move probably, but it loses. He... Now, I was wondering if he saw this, and the answer is yes. And then in this position, you can play king g8 or queen d6. Spencer opined right. after this, this. Maybe Jan thought this. He didn't see queen a8, which is checkmate. Uh, and then it turns out Jan is telling the press conference now the reason he played b5 was after king g8 takes, he didn't see his bishop was attacked. So obviously, if it's not attacked, black just wins a piece. So, so Jan saw queen check, king here, queen takes, and forgot the bishop was attacked. Now, as an added plus to Magnus, the queen is defending d4. So, I mean, this is great. We won a pawn, we're threatening this, we're defending this, and whites up a pawn for nothing. Now, uh, Fabiano Caruana was suggesting that black's last chance was to go here, although he thought this was lost too. That way, if you take the bishop, I take your bishop. So there's lots of variations here. The most interesting one is check, rook e8 check, bishop takes. And it's a rook and bishop ending where white's up a pawn. So and there's no compensation. So you would expect white should be winning. Yeah. But this is probably better than what he did. What he did was, was not good. Uh, he played queen d8, defending his bishop. Bishop b3 is excellent and forced. And here I really like what, what uh, Jan did. I thought Jan was going to resign soon. But in this position, he correctly played bishop e6 because all these endings are losing because white has tremendous pressure on everything. And it, what's funny is if I play rook h4, if it was my move, hanging my rook, I still play queen b8 check and take the rook here. This is actually maybe a threat. Rook f4 is annoying. And black can't do anything here. So Jan correctly 
we were talking about different endings, rook endings, bishop endings, queen endings. I said queen endings is the best for black because of perpetual check, and that's what he did. And actually, Magnus is forced to take all these and take everything. Right. And now, if black can perpetual check, that would be good. But unfortunately, after here, you, you can never perpetual check because my queen can always go to this diagonal. Also, if my queen is defending C1, there's no, there's, you, there's no perpetual here. We can put the queen anywhere on the board. There's no perpetual. We can go here and take, which is what happened. Um, go purple bird. Now, the reason white's winning is not only is white a pawn ahead, these pawns are frankly terrible. Mm -hmm. They're just terrible. And white has the obvious winning plan of b3, a4, Papa John's. If you play b3, a4, and queen your a pawn, that's good. So he, he tried, but he failed miserably. Queen a5, getting counterplay. Queen check, queen f2. And he's like, yay, I have counterplay. Everything's check. And everything wins here for white. And Magnus played a way that nobody would have played. I've been saying it's best. B3 is good. And again, white wants to play a4 and get two queens. With the queen on e4, there's no perpetuals because you can't check You know, here. Checking here is doesn't help. Queen g3 check, king back, you can't play queen e1 check. So with the queen here, there's no perpetual. Now, on the other hand, maybe queen c7 is a good move. I, oh, then queen e5. Yeah. I can't even cheat and draw. No. I was trying to, you know. Yeah. Okay, so he's like, I have no perpetual. This is queening and this is queening. So let's take some pawns. Okay, and then Magnus took this pawn. These pawns can't be, you can't win a pawn. White wants to win this other pawn, and white's queen on e5 stops all checks. So he tried to check, but he failed miserably. Now there's no checks, and here comes the, the pawns. Okay, now here was a winning plan, which we liked until we saw black's counterplay. This is a funny winning plan. Queen b8, which the engine does like, not this stupid engine, defending the pawn, and now we play b6, queen c7, queen. So I'm, I'm telling you my next five moves. Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I was like, man, that's pretty good. Because black can't stop that. B4, B5, B6, queen, C7. and then, yeah. However, I then found the counterplay. G5, uh, G5, G4, H3. And then, okay, there's going to be some checks. Right. And white is still winning, but Magnus probably didn't want to have his king exposed. Because now the, we're going to check you at some point. This is like almost the final position of the game, but Magnus' queen is on f3. Right. And also had more pawns. <laughs> and more yeah. pawns, yeah. <laughs> so Magnus played queen check, and he decided to play this way, which I suggested, then I didn't like it. He's like, I can queen this, I can queen this. My pawns are both protected, Papa John's. Okay, check. And then he played queen c3, stopping... Queen C1 check from black and Queen E1 check from black and Queen E3 check from black and Queen D4 check from black. So there's never a perpetual because once once you check me on this diagonal, I'll play King G1 and there's no more checks. And then I got two pass pawns, one for each of you. Right, now black has no checks because the queen's here defending all the checking squares. And if black could cheat and check anyway on these squares... Right, I just, ah, queen here. Then, then I can play king h2. And you can't check me anymore unless you cheat again. If you keep cheating, then you, <laughs> then you have drawing chances. After queen d1, if you could cheat, then I would play king f2 and probably still winning. <laughs> yeah. Dang. Okay, so he played king h7, and Magnus decided to always retreat. So he checked and played queen d1. That way there's no back rank checks ever, ever. So the king's on h1 it could never be checked. And then here come these pawns, okay? And, you know, here comes Idaho. Now, this pawn does that. That's good for white. The queen's behind it. If black cheated and got his king here and we checked and traded queens, white wins easily. The problem is black can never get his king over here to stop the pawns because when the king goes to the F file, queen F3 wins the, the king and pawn ending and then some, okay? And just, just for edification, okay? In this position, if we try to win both pawns, everything wins. But this wins easily because you can't, the pawns protect each other. And now the engine went, went insane and said plus one billion. 
Now, we don't need to do that to win, but right. that's just for funsies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he played queen e3 check, and now here comes Magnus. Yay, go Magnus. G5, he's playing the same deviled egg. Remember when I showed you G4, H3? That's the only counterplay he has. And Magnus is like, ridiculous. So he just said, okay, I'm going to queen. And, and Jan's like, my counterplay. Hooray. And he's like, thank you. My counterplay. And when I looked at this earlier, this pawn wasn't here and the queen was on B8, the same counterplay. And right. now with having four pawns instead of three and the queen on D1, he played queen F3, which defends all four of his pawns and stops almost all the checks. And here the engine actually announces mate in like a thousand moves. But problem is if we, if we do the two checks we can do, those are two checks we can do, then I could just take this and you have no checks. I'm up four pawns. Man, the truth hurts. So, yeah. So he just resigned here. He could, he, he could win a pawn, but there's just no checks once the king gets to h3. Or g3, depending on where you check me from. Or like queen yeah, e2, like king queen h3. h3. Yeah, yeah or, or g3. <laughs> right. King h3 has this check, check yeah. but he's going to run out. Yeah. Right. And now three pawns up, what else? He decided three pawns down was bad, mm -hmm. so he resigned. Yeah, that was a good game by Magnus. Right, seemed. and the engine says, the caps thing says Magnus played 99.1, but I'm still mad. Right. Should well, have we, played better. Yeah, I mean, Queen E3 was a little inaccurate, probably. This is the worst cap score in this match for a player yeah. at the end, 89.6. What is he, yeah. me? Yeah. Mm, yeah. So uh, this is the final position, Queen F3, and Jan resigned. Mm -hmm. And B5 was an incredible blunder. Not that he played perfect before that, but B5 just loses. The game's yeah. over. And before that, they made other bad moves that didn't matter very much. Point 0.2, point 0.1. But that's an incredible blunder, especially when you're down a point. Now you're down two. Magnus doesn't lose a lot. Nope. So it's looking bad for Jan. Nepo apologized for his Yeah, I heard more, more than one person said yeah, that. Yeah. That. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, well, I feel bad for him, mm -hmm. but, you know, I am for Magnus. Yeah, the truth hurts. <laughs> yeah. But I don't like you to feel sad. Yeah, it's pandemonium. <laughs> I mean, Jan has nothing left. Well, so. some people I want to feel mm -hmm. sad. Yeah, the truth hurts. <laughs> <laughs> but not these mm -hmm. two. No. So that was unfortunate. He played B5 yeah. losing the game. And he got chances of the queen up on ending for some checks. But, yeah. I mean, Magnus is Magnus. See <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. CLs. laughs> Yeah. What do you say? If uh, only... Uh, Apologizes for his man, but yeah. So Magnus played sort of a straightforward, reasonable, logical game, and Jan made yeah. a mistake here and there, but B5 yeah. is insane. Right, right. If he doesn't play B5 and plays King G8, he, he may have drawn the game, then we have a different match. Down one's down one. Okay, down one is good in bridge, right? You get minus Probably. 50, your opponent can't make a part score, but down two. Right. Now, and this is like this is like down two doubled, and redoubled, and vulnerable. I think that's a thousand. Are you talking about suspension bridges or is that a thousand? Is down two redoubled vulnerable a thousand? I think it is. God damn, that's but terrible. It's, psychologically, it's gonna be hard to come back from two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. down. And physically, because he doesn't lose. It's hard two to games. be down two vulnerable so, and redoubled. Even if he was bridge. great psychologically, that's, that's it's still like terrible. Impossible. Is that a thousand or five hundred or six hundred? What is it? I think it's a thousand. Man, that's terrible. Do you want to rate a bridge stream and then we can ask him? No. <laughs> he said it's a thousand. Trust me. Yeah, I He's think it's a, a thousand. All right. Yeah. Man. Well, no. But see, this is what's funny about bridge. Before we read somebody, there's things that never happen in bridge. Never. Mm -hmm. Like four hearts doubled, redoubled, three over tricks. That's never happened in the history of bridge. And yet, the top players in the world are like, oh, that's this. That's this score. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the world just looks up on the back of the cards to see what the score is because it never happens. The top players know all that stuff. Stuff that can't happen and never happens, they still know it. It's like they're good at chess. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough because we got to find somebody who will still stream after this match. 1,003. Right? Boo. Boo. It's, boo. it's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. Sicilians and Grunfelds. Nice. What about uh, mm. this one? The one right above, her, right there. A proper answer after a two club or two. But it says, right, yeah, it says press. That's answer. funny. Yeah. Uh, so no. Right. I don't know. 
Mm -hmm. That seems like the best try, but who knows? Yeah, one time Schifoni doubled a guy in five spades who had like 20 billion master points, and the guy made six. And then the guy said, well, at least he kept me on a slam. Oh, snap! <laughs> Yeah, he, he, got, he got Schifoni good. That's like yeah. uh, Carklin style. Trash right, yeah, like I hope you bid better next game. Oh. Yeah, right. yeah, that was funny. Uh, okay, this didn't work. Nothing right. works. Now, this game was good, but it doesn't really compare with my game with Aminov. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Queenie and Kingy 3. <laughs> that you know, was good. That God was knew good. it was like I do I remember that. I do remember yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, and like Alejandro saw nothing. He was downstairs helping and analyze the game. I was yeah, upstairs, yeah. and he was like, you know, this and then everything he said was wrong. He's like, ah, I suck. Nine, yeah. nine. Yeah. Thank you for gifting five Yay. subs. Yeah, the more subs you gift, the more money we Yay. have. I'm and gonna... subs. Are we writing? Can you type exclaim stats? I want yeah, somebody I to donate so we get 2300. Wow, we're actually pretty close. close. Only Can someone more. give 19 subs? I want to be a 2300. Not 20. Not 20. Don't give 20. Or good. you could give 18 because 2299 is funny. That's good enough. Yeah. yeah. And so forth. My future USCF rating. Right? Yeah, somebody give 18 or 19 subs. <laughs> and if 10 of you listen to me, then we did good. 